Hello everyone, my name is Connor Hoffman. As you can see, before me is Onipu, the Tohunga, as they were originally called in 2001. Now, the Tohunga were promotional sets released in 2001 at McDonald's, and therefore earned the nickname in the Bionicle community, McTorin, because of McDonald's and Matorin, obviously. These sets, they're just nothing to write home about. They, they have a disc throwing mechanic with the arm, pew, they have swivelly legs, their arms a little bit stretchy, but their head's completely stationary, they don't have eyes, and I mean the disc can be stored on their back, but that's really the coolest feature. That's really all that's that there is to them. They can't be, they can't be posed really, they can't uh, be used for stop motion, their play value just isn't very high. So naturally, the Bionicle community has been trying to improve on this design for ages. Now, hasn't really been possible that much, because most people that end up trying to revamp these guys either end up making them really big, or really clunky and really awkward looking, or their design isn't possible to be repeated over the rest of the McTorn, but all that changes today. Move over, old Onepu. Here's new Onepu. Now this design was inspired by another fellow YouTuber's design, and that YouTuber's name is Don't Joel Me. Now the link to his video is in the description, but I've basically taken his design and improved on it. One of the pros of this design is that the color schemes can be replicated over the rest of the other Tohunga. So just a few examples. We have Matoro, Maku with her chewed up hand thanks to one of my dogs, and... Kongu. As you can see, this makes the Tohunga very poseable. Now, I will show you how to build this design later, but let's go over some of the features that are still possible with this design for the Tohunga. Okay, so here's the range of articulation for this design. The legs can still swivel back and forth, just like on the original, but now they can also bend all the way backwards, just like that. So you can get a huge amount of posability out of the legs just with this one joint. Now, unfortunately, the limitation of the design is that he can't put his feet forward, but you can sort of like mimic that motion by their feet being all the way in the front of this motion, just like that. Also, the arms have about this much range of articulation in the swivel, so a huge amount, and then there's a few places where it's hindered a little bit, but it can move about that far in front, and when it's behind the body, it can move onto the ground just like that, essentially. And he can also put his arm like all the way behind his back as well, and behind his head. And then last but not least, his head is mounted on a ball joint, so all the swivel that's necessary from that is still there. This design is also compatible with the original Victorian head, so if you don't have enough Mata heads, you can use one of those instead. Also with the construction, there's an optional hole on the back here that you can use to mount custom tools or disc launchers or whatever you feel a Matoran should be carrying. And then all you need to do to do the disc throwing mechanic is just pinch him right there, put the disc in his hand, hold on, let me not have my hand in the way of the camera, and there you go. Also, one last thing to note is that this design scales fairly well with the original Toamata, so there's no worry about size comparison issues or any other type of inconsistency within the Bionicle storyline. So now for a quick how-to, I'll be using Matoro for this example because his parts are the easiest to see. So to start with, you're going to need two three-long axles and two two-long axles, as well as two axle pin conversion pieces. You're going to need three of these Technic connectors, one with two at one with one axle on one side and one with two axles on either side. You're also going to need four two long thin axle only lift arms, or as I like to call them, very useful pieces, as well as two washers. Then you'll also need the obvious hand connector, and we're going to use a pass-through ball joint as well on that. And then the real key to this design is these two newish, like 2016-2015 Bionicle slash Technic pin Technic connectors and a three long lightsaber rod piece. Now that can be replaced with a cut flex tube if you prefer, but 
these actually exist in LEGO now, so I prefer to use those. Now everything in this build is actually legal connections. It doesn't require any cut or stressed pieces. And theoretically this would have been possible as soon as Bionicle 2015 came out and these two and these two new parts became available, but I guess it just hasn't been discovered until now. So, to get started with the build, you're going to go ahead and take the hand connector and start by placing on either side the two long axles. Just like that. Then you're going to take these two very useful pieces and stick them on either side. Now, the key to this design is that all these pieces are available in multiple different colors. These pieces, unfortunately, are not, and I think the very useful pieces are only unavailable in lime green, but I could be wrong on that. Next up, you're going to take this Technic connector, take a three long axle, pass it through the top, and then stagger it on either side with very useful pieces. And on the ends of that axle, you're going to put these washers. Now you could shorten this, but it would remove the function of the disc throwing, so you kind of need these on there if you want to be able to throw discs. If not, you can replace those or get rid of them entirely. Then you're just going to layer the two on top of each other, just like so. Then on either side, you're going to just place blue pins with the axle side going through the two very useful pieces. Just like that. Now these very useful pieces are available in white, I just didn't have enough of them for this build, so you could even make this even more accurate. Next up, take the three long ax or the three long lightsaber rod and stick it in the bottom of the Technic connector. It might be a little stiff, the stiffer the better actually with this because it because it helps the posability stay stay up. And then, last but not least, you'll take the two Technic connectors and just stick them on either side like that. And then you'll, that's the torso. Just take these two Technic connectors and stick them on the blue pins like so, so they stick upwards. And as you can see, that's all you, there is to it. From the neck, all you do, gotta do is stick a three long axle on the front, or a blue pin if you want to use the uh, Tohunga head, the gray one without the eye stock. But since we're all about the cool factor here, we're going to stick the Mata head on top of that. And that's how you connect the head. And then the rest is pretty self-explanatory. You stick the feet in the bottom of the Technic connectors. And the arms on the Technic connectors up here. And there you have the posability. As you can see, everything moves around as it should. And then last but not least is the mask. That's how you build this design. All right, and that's how you build a custom posable Tohunga slash Mictorin build. If you liked the video, make sure you like the video. I post awesome Bionicle videos like this every other week, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of it. Also, special thanks to Don't Joel Me for inspiring me on this design. Link to his video is in the video description. Also, if you'd like to use this design, feel free to go ahead with or without credit. I do not mind. It brings me great joy to see these guys moving around the way they should. Next videos, I'll be returning to the Mox spotlight slash reviews and it will be a spotlight of Ray, the Toa slash Matoran of Peace. So be sure to check that out when it comes out, but for now, check out my other videos such as the awesome highly anticipated audio version of Night of Nights Prologue 1. I put a lot of work into it, so I'd appreciate it if you guys all check it out and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. But for now, once again, I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.